Now, should language be protected by the law in the same way as race or religion? That's the suggestion being made in a debate this afternoon by the leader of Plaid Cymru at Westminster, Liz Savile-Roberts. It's in response to an article in the Sunday Times in which columnist Rod Liddell wrote, the Welsh, or some of them, are moaning that a motorway bridge linking their rain-sodden valleys with the First World is to be renamed the Prince of Wales Bridge. They would prefer it to be called something indecipherable with no real vow, such as this made-up name you can see now. Let them have their way, so long as it allows people to get out of the place pronto, should we worry about what it's called. Well, the article caused considerable outrage on Twitter. Welsh Assembly member for Anglesey, Reen Ap Yorowath, says, I won't waste time on Rod Liddell. He's just an antiquated, attention-seeking buffoon. But really, at the Sunday Times, imagine printing such prejudicial poison about another religion, race, people. Wouldn't be acceptable. Grow thicker skin, they guffaw. Well, Liz Savile-Roberts joins us now, as does the columnist James Dellingpole. Welcome to both of you. James Dellingpole, that's offensive, isn't it, that article, and it's prejudicial. I think Rod Liddell is a very naughty boy. He's not house-trained. And that, of course, is why people enjoy reading his columns. I wonder, actually, how many, how many Welsh people have even heard of, of Rod Liddell. And I'm slightly... Um, I've got a bit of Welsh blood in me myself. Um, you, you, you all have heard of um, uh, the Prince of Gwent, Owen de la Pole. He's got to be a relative of mine, hasn't he? So I am disappointed with the way that my homeland has gone. It used to be a proud place of the Mabinogion and Geoffrey of Monmouth, and now it's become this, this whiny place, a sort of whiny welfare state where the best that, that the elected officials can do is grumble about how offended well, they are by nasty you, columnists. You said just then that Rod Little was a naughty boy. Um, I mean, using that sort of language to describe Wales, um, is that fair? I think just to take a, st a step back from what Rod Little has said now, and this is a drip feed Welsh speakers and Welsh people continually get this sort of treatment. And we're just supposed to take it. We're supposed to say, grow a thicker skin, it's, it's a joke. But just to speak plainly, no, this has an effect. And particularly when it comes to Welsh language. Now, I'm from South East London, I've learnt Welsh. But my husband and my daughters, that's their first language. They think in Welsh, they dream in Welsh. They go to school, they work in Welsh. And this is being constantly told, they're constantly being told that there is something inferior, something jokey about their language. And that has an effect on people. Should it be protected because of the mockery that we've just heard Liz describe? I think there are lots of fine old things that need preserving in some way that add to the gaiety of nations and, and make us who we are. So, fox hunting, I'm sure you'll agree, fox hunting must be preserved at all, all costs. Morris dancing, again, you know, uh, the Welsh language. These are, all, these are all good, charming things and part of our culture. Charming? I think, Is it charming but, but to talk say, about the language? But, but, but I would say that if you're getting to the point where you've got all these people in authority in Wales demanding that Rod Little be, be uh, put in prison pretty much or pursued by Ipso for just a harmless joke. That's, that's pushing it too far. Has there been an overreaction to what Rod Little said? He's deliberately controversial and he deliberately says these things to get a rise. I think what James has just said is fundamentally unacceptable. It is an idea that a language which is spoken by people in these islands as their first language is somehow an, an optional extra, a hobby. Is, is something that I, I, I deeply regret. I come from a, a county where the majority of people are first language Welsh speakers. And as I said, this affects people. Now, Welsh, the, the, the Welsh government are endeavouring their best to try and increase the number of Welsh speakers. We have a, an increased number of schools, we have an increased number of people attending those schools. But this affects parents. Do they want to send those children when they think they're going to be the butt of these jokes? Right, but do you really want to make it illegal? or sort of criminalise someone like Rod Little writing an article in the way well, he did? I would take a step back and I'd look at how IPSA actually treats groups. And that's the regulator. And the, the, the independent press regulator. IPSA treats groups. It, it doesn't regard groups as having a complaint. Now, this is a time post-Brexit where we have growing hate crime, growing Islamophobia. That, growing of course, is always disputed in terms of statistical evidence to back that up. But anyway... But nonetheless, the, the NUJ, and, I, and I, they, they have put forward motions in the past that this lack of protection for groups in the general media is encouraging 
the hate expression against indiv against groups, and of course groups are made up of individuals. Right, I mean, James Daly, Paul, if you look at the Equality Act 2010, Liz is asking for protection, legal protection, and you have age, disability, gender reassignment, marriage, civil partnership. Shouldn't language be there? Joe, you're talking to the wrong person here. I have great faith in the people of, of the land of my fathers. Um, 52% of them voted Brexit, which shows they've got a lot of common sense. But the idea that the most important issue in Wales right now is arresting people who are rude about the Welsh seems to be away with the fairies. There are so many problems with Wales. For example, you've got about the worst version of the National Health Service. I think people are more concerned in, in Wales about things like that than they are about what Rod Little says in the Sunday Times. Uh, frankly, this is a conflating argument. There will always be a range of issues. And one of the things that I would want to say that Islamophobia and antisemitism, there are many serious uh, defamation incidents out there, but Welsh is on a these insults towards Welsh are on the spectrum of that. And if we tolerate that, then we are tolerating on the walk to the others. Yes, there are other problems in Wales, but Welsh is unique to Wales. And what we're calling for here is a respect, in a sense, calling people back to this has an effect. And if this has an effect, why then are we tolerating that? What is effectively the majority mocking the minority, as it has over the years, as every minority has experienced? Why would we tolerate this? Because it's on the same spectrum as the wider oppressions. I think if the Welsh language is good, then it is strong enough to survive a little gentle teasing, uh, I mean, almost affectionate teasing, actually, from Rod Liddell. He's admitted subsequently that he actually quite likes the Welsh. And I think, you know, I think you want to take his jokes with a pinch of salt. Get a sense of, what is, what is the Welsh for get a life? Because um, I think it could be quite useful in this circumstance. We have a long tradition of people losing their confidence of using the to use the language, of parents deciding that it's against their children's interests to receive the language. No, this has an effect on how people use it. This is not a, a light matter of growing a sense of, a, a sense of humour. There's a long tradition, a drip feed of this. It's right. just another manifestation of it. Philippa, should there be legal protection for the Welsh language? Well, uh, we actually face the same issue in Scotland. I mean, the, the reason that Gaelic um, shrank so massively was children who went off to school with Gaelic as their first language were mocked, were intimidated, were, were beaten often by teachers. And we actually see the same mocking of the Scots language in, in Scotland. And where I, I'm not sure about legal or exactly how far you take it, but what I would agree agree with Liz is this constant mocking of what is your culture, because that's what language is, it's an expression of your culture, does actually wear people down and undermine their confidence. What do you say? Well, I'd say that, look, this goes back a long way. The noblest prospect a Scotchman ever saw was the high road that leads, leads to England. That was Dr Johnson. Uh, he was being rude about the Scots, but at the same time he was friends with James Bos Boswell, who was a magnificent Scots, and they were mates underneath all that, that banter. And I think banter goes through the ages. I think if we start to sort of criminalise this behaviour, I think we are actually worsening our relations rather than improving them. And on that, on these good relations that exist at the end of this discussion, thanks for coming in. Mm -hmm.